Hi, I'm Jenny Piper. I'm the Communications Research Analyst at Snow Isle Libraries. Snow Isle Libraries provides public library service in Snohomish and Island counties in western Washington. The Observational Research Toolkit for Libraries grew out of a project in Snow Isle's Communications Department. Our original objective was to develop guidelines and protocols for conducting observational research in our community libraries. The purpose of this is to understand customer behavior and ultimately, of course, to serve our customers better. A group of graduate students from the University of Washington's Information School proposed this toolkit as a way to make it easy for library staff in any location or in any department to conduct their own observational research. This toolkit is a product of these students' work in partnership with Snow Isle Libraries and the Spokane County Library District. The toolkit is designed for unobtrusive observation in a library to determine how customers interact or don't interact with a specific target, such as a video monitor, promotional materials, or a book display. Now, in general, research projects have three steps. First, research design. Second, data collection, in this case that's your uh, field observations, and third, data reporting. This toolkit makes it easy to streamline your project by providing training and all the tools you need to plan and implement your research and analyze the results. Specifically, the toolkit includes several video modules with accompanying handouts covering the nuts and bolts of the process and best practices. The video also covers a topic that I know is of particular concern to many of you and is central to the values of public libraries, and that is of privacy and the freedom of inquiry. Other pieces of the toolkit include instruments for you to use in conducting your field observations, a data input and analysis tool, downloadable files of useful documents, and background research. Unobtrusive observation is useful because it focuses on actual behavior rather than reported or remembered behavior. It's non-disruptive if you do it right, and you will learn tips for that in a later module. It's non-reactive and repeatable, and it's a good source of longitudinal data. Conducting an observation, altering variables in accordance with known principles of attention, and then conducting a follow-up observation will provide measurable data for decision making and ultimately help you optimize the use of library space and resources as well as serve your customers better. Up next, you'll hear um, tips for successful implementations of this toolkit from our project partner at the Spokane County Library District.